and welcome back to the English shooting live stream uh, it's good to see all of uh, the regulars in there thank you very much for standing by if you're new to the stream then thank you for joining this is an opportunity to talk about all things guns mostly around the uh, the UK scene and UK laws if there's anything you want 
to know it would be very much appreciated to hit that like button right now before you forget it is free and it does make me very happy and of course feel free to use the chat uh, box whatever you want to call it wherever it is on your stream uh, to get involved ask any questions bring up any topics uh, a quick bit of admin first uh, because I am absolutely sweating my bollocks off uh, I do have a fan on so let me know if you can actually pick that up on the mic and if, if you can then I'll I'll try and move it or turn it off and I'll just be very sweaty for this evening's uh, stream and of course any technical issues let me know and I'll try and sort them as as usual uh, but yeah I have a busy week a lot going on I've got a, a bit of an exclusive for you I've got two exclusives actually one a bit of uh, an interesting news and one a new product that will be coming to market very soon uh, but of course the biggest news overall within the shooting world is the disappearance of seven million rounds I mean Americans love to outdo us on everything, you know, not just guns, but especially guns, and they just have to very slightly sound. Okay, right, I'm just going to move the fan. I'm going to be sweaty. There we go. I'm already feeling the heat. Hope that's better already. I'm going to suffer for you. Um, so yes, Americans love to outdo us, especially when it comes to numbers around firearms and shooting. And, well... We will all remember, certainly if you're here in the UK, the Ely Ammo Heist. Uh, so there was a video on the channel. If you want to learn a bit more about that, then go and check it out. Um, it's, it's, we did it a number of months ago now. Uh, but uh, Ely Ammunition, so the sort of world-renowned uh, 2 2 target ammunition manufacturer they make a lot of the ammunition for the olympics well a lorry of theirs got broken into whilst the driver was asleep and 330,000 rounds went missing and now that's that's a lot that definitely raised a lot of eyebrows uh, but this story has come out that um the there were two tractor trailers as they are called out in the states or arctic lorries as we would say here in the uk um, two of them basically got heisted. Um, s surprisingly um, and miraculously and thankfully, none of the drivers or the staff um, that were sort of hijacked and heist were hurt. Um, uh, but the supposed Mexican drug cartel went off with 7 million rounds into the night. The area of Mexico that this happened was uh, or is a notorious sort of cartel war zone. There's a hell of a lot of violence going out there, going on in that area. And uh, some people are saying that this was a planned uh, attack or planned heist, maybe just because it's a quite prominent cartel area heists and hijackings are probably commonplace uh, where the cartel are operating so maybe they just struck it lucky and it, it sort of was a, a pot luck uh, or maybe they had a bit of inside knowledge and, and knew uh, where it was coming from so the ammunition that was stolen came from the Aguila uh, I think I'm saying that right the Aguila uh, factory uh, which funny enough I didn't know was Mexican until this happened so all publicity is good publicity, I guess. Um, I've, I've used a little bit before. I know that Otto at Cotswold Classic Arms absolutely raves about the stuff. He said it's really good value for money, really high quality, um, and you can get some really punchy stuff. There was a, a round that he made uh, that he gave us, and it was some sort of ridiculous grain. I think it was like a like eighty or or ninety grain um, bullet on it. But anyway, they made off with this 7 million rounds. It's reported that around 98.5% of that 7 million rounds was 2-2 LR. Not going to imagine that's the cartel's go-to round of choice, if I'm going to be honest. But there's still 1.5% of the 7 million, which comes in at around 100, 120,000 rounds of other larger calibers. So from the reports, you're talking... Um, sort of 40 mil, you're talking 223, 9 mil, so ammunition that they are going to, to want. Again, even 100, 120,000 rounds of 223 or some 9 mil, that's still going to keep you going. That's uh, still quite a stockpile. Uh, but I thought it may be a, a little bit uh, fun in a way, let's lose, use our imagination, to come up with a way that you would shoot seven or use seven million rounds of uh, ammunition and i'm just going to say for 
you know, the sort of the maths, e you know, the maths easiness. Uh, let's say it was all two two. I was doing a little bit of research um, before the video, before the live stream, even. And some of you may be aware of a gun called the American One Eighty. It's a full auto, um, full auto sub gun that fires two two. Uh, I think it's two two short and also two two long rifle. But it has a um, a rate of fire. Uh, well, theoretical let's let's ignore mag changes let's just say it's got a continuous infinity belt fed on it uh if 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 you manage to rig that up it's got a, a rate of fire of 1200 rounds a minute it would take you 95 continuous hours to shoot 7 million rounds of 22 I mean that's probably going to be the the best 95 hours of your life probably not going to have much feeling in your uh, in your fingers in your hands or maybe even have any hearing left after that and maybe be a little bit rattly and even though 22 is a light recoiling round 7 million of the buggers is is going to is going to leave a, a lasting impression so yeah 95 hours continuous full auto fire um, hands up for that one. Uh, I volunteer, <laughs> um, you know, tribute and all that. Uh, based on a uh, hundred round, a uh, hundred round round count for a world shoot. Uh, of course, we do. Well, we were meant to have the IPSC mini rifle world shoot out in Florida last year. It's got got postponed to this year, and I believe it's now being postponed now to um, 2023. That's actually a bit of side news. Um, while we're on that point, um, I believe. Uh, I believe all the world shoots have now been postponed to 2023, including the shotgun world shoot, which of course is sort of my main focus and also mag load, of, of course, but getting that out of the way. But based on 500, uh, 500 round count, you could shoot a world shoot 13,790 times. Uh, if you want to be a little bit generous, there's, I think, in the region or a maximum of like 1500 uk psa members that's the ipsc franchise for practical shooting here in the uk you could give every single member of the uk psa 4600 rounds i mean you know that would be a good day out or you know for some people even a, a year supply so you want to be generous uh, if if you want to actually extend that to all fac holders there's around 150,000 fac holders in the uk that's firearm certificate holders it's what you need to be able to buy you know, rifles and uh, long barrel pistols long barreled revolvers things like that section one shotguns um you could out, you, you could give out 50 rounds per fac holder so i, I think that's just trying to um quantify in some way how much seven million rounds is uh, i'm i'm sure the likes of jerry michelak uh, he's uh he's probably in his career going to you know potentially be get the closest to that amount but i i could not feasibly see any one individual managing to do that it's that is just absolute in insanity that sort of amount of rounds uh, of course it's not very good that it has fallen into the hands of the drug cartels but this is a, an organization that is well used to smuggling contraband substances and, and other contraband in and out of borders there and with all the wars and all the violence that, that goes on there I don't think they struggle to get guns and ammunition in the first place yes this is going to give them a massive stockpile but they're already dangerous you know it's not it's it's not necessarily as um potentially as bad as the ely heist although guns are more heavily restricted here in the uk and harder to get the the ammunition is certainly a lot harder to get so having 330,000 rounds floating about the uk uh, that could potentially cause some significant issues whilst there's a lot more ammunition that's gone missing in this in this heist I, I think overall the cartel are pretty armed and pretty dangerous to, uh, to begin with. What I could potentially see this or see what's happening, especially with the ammunition shortages out in the US, it may not be used to f directly fuel violence in terms of ammunition for the cartels, but may even be sold. I know they have, let's say, high value products to be selling, um, but I estimated, I, I think it was around at £70 pound uh, that's British pounds um, per thousand. You're looking at about half a million pounds worth of ammunition. Some of the news reports were actually estimating it at around 2.7 million dollars. A little bit of a um, sort of a, a little bit of a difference there. But then you know 
there was that 100,000 rounds of potential 9mm, 223, so that ammunition is going to be a lot more expensive per round or per thousand than the 22 rimfire. So yeah, uh, pretty amazing and incredible story all round. It is, again, an absolute miracle. I'm, I'm very pleased to have heard that none of the, uh, the drivers or none of the staff that were on the trucks got hurt. This is the cartel we're talking about. They're not going to think twice um, about doing what's needed uh let's just say so uh, it, yeah i don't i don't necessarily th see you're going to see waves of violence off of this um and so far no one has seemingly got hurt but yeah i could definitely see that being quite a big money maker you are talking potentially millions of dollars or worth of ammunition smuggle it back into the us wh where ammunition is trading two or three times above retail at the moment you could make a fair bit of uh um fair bit of uh, money out of it um do just your uh just like your average day uh average tuesday in mexico yeah mexico doesn't have the best reputation does it sorry for any mexicans watching um it is a country i would absolutely love to visit but not it's like south africa i probably will at some point have the privilege of uh, of visiting south africa but it does mildly terrify me um, there, I've just heard so many stories about South Africa. It's like Australia, right? There's just too many things out there to kill you. Whilst I would love to go to Australia, the landscapes that I've seen on TV and online, absolutely spectacular, like nothing else on, on this planet. You're, you're dicing with death as far as I see it. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. Um, Daniel or Daniela, sorry, I keep sorry i keep assuming um thanks for joining and we've got uh mods Calvolt, and uh captain crack treat them with respect or they will ban you uh but yeah let me know what you guys that's really like the uh um the headline story the biggest story sort of around shooting um across the world this week there are some other sort of big points that we're going to get into we are going to be talking about another conviction for 3d printed guns here in the uk see i swear somebody like four or five years ago was going on about this and that it would potentially be a problem and um they were laughed at at that point i think that might be the same person that was saying that the mars and lever release were going to be banned a good year to two th to three years before it actually happened um so like a broken clock i'm i'm right occasionally um can't hear the fan, Callum. Stay cool, my dude. It's it's fine. It's fine. You'll just see me slowly melt into the chair over, overall. I might have a um, um, a shower, cold shower after this. N not for that reason. Did I say 40 mil? I, I didn't mean 40 mil. Um, 40 mic mic. It's not 40 mil, it's 40 mic mic. Hands up if you know where that's from or, or what, what that's a reference from. Um, yes, yeah, sorry, I meant 40, 40 cal. Um, they make some pretty good centerfire ammunition too. Bought like 300 rounds off their 5.56 and it was pretty good. Just a little dirty. I am really interested. I probably should get in contact with Otto and see like, look, can you, you hook me up with some more Aguila? Um, I, I, I constantly hear good things uh, about it. Um, our two plus one practical, let's go. All right. So I did have this. Um, we will get back on to the, uh, the, the heist if you have any more questions about it but that's really the the general uh, summary and just to add as well for those that didn't know the 330,000 rounds from uh, Ely ammunition was all recovered so let's see if uh, they can have as much luck over in Mexico or the US wherever it's going to turn up and see if they can um, if they can get it back um, oh, David here's a here's a bit of knowledge for you Aguila means eagle top ammo on trips um, in 9mm and 223. Um, is that what you use on American shooting trips, isn't it? Do we use a Gila? I thought we used um, Peak Performance. Um, I say we, I mean, you You know, you know David Supplies. Um, I know we definitely had some Peak Performance one year, um, and there was another, what was it? There was another ammunition company. I can't remember what it's called now. Sorry. Um, but yes, the 2 plus 1. So some of you guys... Uh, might have seen the me most recent video uh, that went out last night, actually. I, I've got a bit out of sync. Usually I like to put videos out either Monday or Tuesday or maybe even over the weekend and give them at least a couple of days before the live stream. Um, needs must recently. Just been absolutely 
uh, hectic uh, all round in all areas of life. Uh, but yeah, so put out the video about two plus one. So a quick recap or education. For those of you that don't know about it in the UK, we have two classifications of shotguns. We have a section two shotgun certificate shotgun, which uh, for a tube fed pump action or semi-auto is restricted to two plus one capacity, two in the tube, one in the chamber. If you have a firearm certificate and a section one shotgun under that firearm certificate, you are unrestricted in capacity. You can also own a box-fed shotgun or a detachable magazine shotgun under a firearm certificate. For those that are into your practical shooting, you will know of the uh, practical shotgun discipline and how in the UK, where we can't have centerfire uh, semi-automatic rifles or we can't have proper handguns, as it were, unless you go over to Northern Ireland, the main IPSE discipline that we do is practical shotgun. We are bloody good at it, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe we founded it, if practical shotgun was founded in the UK, and fun fact, we also founded a mini rifle because we couldn't have the center fires, we moved on to 2-2 rim fire and semi-auto, and IPSC actually adapted that as a full discipline as well. But practical shotgun is our main discipline, however, the diff the main difference is, um, you know, just as a, an overview between a shotgun certificate and a firearm certificate, uh, in layman's, the shotgun certificate is a lot easier to get. You don't need to provide good reason. It's effectively a shall issue unless the police have any specific concerns about your character or suitability. Whereas a firearm certificate, you need to provide good reason. For sport shooting, this is usually being a full member of a home office approved club. So the process of getting your firearm certificate is, you know, you spend, well, first of all, you've got to find a club and, and hope that there's one near to you and hope that that club does the discipline you want to do. If they don't do practical shooting, then it doesn't really give you much justification to have the FAC for guns for practical shooting. But let's say the club does and there's one nearby, Usually it's anywhere between, say, three, six months is the average to complete a probational period at a club. Some clubs are even 12 months. So you've got to join the club, do your minimum amount of shoots, shoot there continuously for three, maybe six months, and then you can apply for your firearm certificate, which can take anywhere in the region of, say, three to sometimes even 18 months. So the requirement for, you know, shooting an unrestricted shotgun, having that firearm certificate, having to be a member of a home office approved club. If you want to get into practical shooting and shoot something unrestricted, you could at worst case be looking at two to potentially three years until you can get it. Section one shotguns as well scare the bejesus out of the police. They really don't like them. Um, and in some counties and some cases I've heard of, they are they really do limit you, they really do push back and they want you to have a disproportionate amount of justification for it. So you'll need to be, say, obviously a full member of a home office approved club. You'll need your UK PSA membership. Some stipulate that you need to have completed your safety course. So there's just a huge barrier to entry with a section one shotgun it is well worth the wait i might just add but with a shotgun certificate a lot easier to get a lot quicker to get anybody um watching now let's just say uh, i think it's above 15 or 16 for a shotgun certificate as long as you've known one person for at least two years to be a reference you could apply for your shotgun certificate right now you could download the application form, fill it in, or oh, it's all online now mostly, so just go online, fill it in, and send it off. In three to six months on average, you will have a shotgun certificate, you can go and buy a shotgun, and then compete in practical shotgun. Now, whilst at the moment there's nothing to stop you doing that anyway, the whole point of that two plus one video, should there be a two plus one division within the UK within practical shotgun, is to encourage more people to do it, to create a fair and level playing field. I can tell you from experience, competing against an unrestricted guns with a two plus one is quite disheartening. It's quite like it, it puts you off unless your club is sort of, let's say forward thinking enough to create two plus one divisions. There is no point comparing your times, comparing your scores to an unrestricted gun. Unless you beat them, then that's just quite funny, um, and you can get a little bit of a kick out of that. But 
you want to compare yourself to to like mind well not like minded but like for like competitors you want to be competing and comparing yourself against the other two plus ones and with the uk psa with any uk psa sanctioned match there is not a two plus one division and i think that puts a lot of potential two plus one shooters or just shotgun certificate holders from entering the sport and it makes you think well what's the point if i can't really compete on a fair playing field uh to the to the other competitors or other say two plus ones because there's no differentiation there could be 15 other two plus one shooters in that match but when you look at the results, you won't know who they are, so you don't know who you're comparing yourself to. So you think, well, well sort of, what's the point? Because I'm not really going to gain anything from competing with a two plus one from you know, maybe a little bit of match experience, and there is a lot to gain from shooting with a two plus one. But you want to see the results. You want to see if you're improving. You want to compare yourself like for like. And I think just a lot of people look at how arduous it could potentially be going from a shotgun certificate to a firearm certificate and they go actually i'll just stick to my clay pigeon shooting i really think opening up and creating a uh, sort of a recognized uk psa two plus one division would draw a hell of a lot more uh, shotgun shooters shotgun certificate holders and two plus one owners into the sport because once they start winning trophies once they're able to sort of you know have a bit of uh, banter with their friends you know oh you know i picked you by two percent or oh you you know you picked me on this stage by two percent it creates that um uh, sort of, in a way camaraderie it, it creates that interest all the time that you know you're just way outnumbered in terms of the unrestricted to the restricted it just diminishes a little bit of the fun i think of course i will shoot any shotgun match i can get my hands on uh, with a two plus one i think it's all great match experience um, of course you'll all know that i i pretty much have apart from it obviously being um unrestricted it is a restricted uh, two plus one that i use but i have the long tube in on there to simulate the full length of an unrestricted gun so i'm you know i'm practicing my stage craft i'm practicing sort of getting in the mindset of a competition you know the range commands making ready you know, again stage craft planning out your stage and just being in that competition environment yeah i'm not exactly pro practicing my quad loads i'm getting pretty shit hot at the dual loads again but there is still a lot to to learn but then I, I like to see myself or I would say that I'm a serious competitor. You know, I really do want to eventually go for the top steps. A lot of people that want to start off to begin with, they, they're not interested. They just want to have a bit of fun, but they also want to be able to compare themselves to their friends. And all the time they can't do that. I think it's, it's missing a massive draw. And I think there is a potential huge benefit in bringing that two plus one. Also covered in the video, of course, I've basically just redone the video right now for your live. So you can still go and watch the video and give it a like if you want um the the main big pull is or, or, or pull of all of this is there's 150,000 firearm certificate holders there are over half a million shotgun certificate holders so there is a much bigger audience there there's a much bigger potential to uh, to to get more numbers into the sport so i i re i'm all for it and actually the the general response from that video was i think overwhelmingly positive a few people saying no you're neutering the sport no it's going to give the anti something to sort of m remove section one shotguns away i just don't think those arguments um hold like hold up and i explained all of that in the video uh but yeah let me know what you think about it um and yeah if you enjoyed that video if you found it uh, interesting james d dean shoot too low too of course that is the mantra if you're shooting two plus one you never let the gun go dry you, you just cannot afford you can't afford not to it's shoot too low to shoot too low to so yeah you, you are at a massive disadvantage of course with standard capacity ipsc start on an option one you'd have eight in the tube one in the chamber so you're missing six rounds at the very beginning of the stage and there's a lot of stages that will be like eight or nine rounds total. So for a section one shooter, it's just buff, 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 buff. They don't even need to, to load. With a two plus one, you're constantly loading. It will make you very good. Shooting two plus one will make you very, very good at dual loads because you will be loading far, uh, far more than sort of any quad loader. 
Um, and, and I think that's, that has pulled through quite nicely to when I have shot competitions with a, with a section one because you're, you're used to the muscle memory of getting the gun down and getting it back up again. Yes, the bit in the middle of doing a quad load rather than the dual load, that takes a little bit of practice to get into. But in terms of getting the gun off your shoulder and onto your shoulder again, um, you, it's just sort of become second nature because you end up doing it so, uh, so much more. Uh, David Kiddle, we could run a two plus one dedicated match at Lee and Solent. Be good laugh. I'd be up for that. Like, let's let's like just bring everyone back to the same level. Everyone has to shoot two plus one, and let's see who comes out on top. Um, it's. I, I can see there being a lot of very frustrated sort of top level shooters shooting three running dry and going, ah, oh, fuck it. You know, it's, you get used to it. You get used to having that extra capacity and, and having to flip flop between like I've had over the years. Um, it does, uh, um, it does mess with you. It takes a while to sort of reset and switch between. Uh, Captain Crack just got a section one put on a variation. Awesome. What gun are you going for? It better be an M2 or a 1301. And if you dare say, 940 jm pro i will remove you as a mod <laughs> um is handgun ownership actually popular amongst northern ireland shooters um i uh, chill the go dog saying i don't think so i believe it is i think it's as popular out there as it was here back in the early 90s and before um i don't know what the breakdown is um in terms of handgun but handgun does tend to be one of the most popular disciplines across the world that's because handguns tend to be cheaper handguns are a lot easier to store you need a much smaller safe um easier to maintain um and there are other reasons you would want to use a handgun or own a handgun which you can own a handgun for those other reasons out in northern ireland um so um so yeah i i would imagine it's pretty popular i mean nitsa um as far as i am aware is predominantly a handgun shooting club uh so i didn't see i think i maybe saw one or two long guns when i was there everyone everyone that was there not just the people that had gone over there to shoot handguns because obviously they would have a handgun but the the regulars the sort of the lo the locals and the club regular club members they all turned up there with with handguns so um, so it seems pretty popular as a sample size of, of NHTSA. The 30 year ban on assault rifles was made unlawful. Uh, yeah, a lot of stuff going on at the moment. I tend, I usually get in trouble when I focus too much on America. Um, and I'll leave it at that. Um, certain powers don't like it when I seem to, to, to focus on a sort of American shooting and laws and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, a lot going on at the moment over there. I know there's another whole debacle with the ATF and the pistol brace. I mean, just watching it from the outside in, it's like, make your bloody minds up. I, I honestly don't know what is now a pistol, what can have an arm brace, what can't have an arm brace, or what even is an arm brace. Um, I've seen various memes of guns with um, flashlights on the on the rear of them um didn't somebody actually get one of those registered i'm pretty or maybe maybe it was just a dildo i can't remember i i, sw I swear i've got this image of there's a lot of images in my head but i swear i've got this image of somebody actually registering a flashlight as an arm brace on a pistol was it and was it a flashlight or am i just making it up mm, be, be an interesting idea um <laughs> Uh, English eating. Does UK law allow you to use somebody else's unrestricted shotgun? Sorry if I missed it. Um, YouTube just notified me. Um, actually, thank you for reminding me because this is also another big point between having a two plus one division and a section one shotgun and another barrier to entry. It's all for me. It's all about removing any potential barriers to entry and moreover, making it as easy as, as, as possible or as straightforward as possible. The, the issue with section one shotguns is the only people that can shoot them are the certificate holder or an RFD for specific purposes. So if you go to a club and you see a load of people shooting unrestricted section one shotguns and you're like, cool, I want to give that a go. Nope, you can't do it. You need to have your own section one shotgun on your own FAC. So whilst again at the moment, clubs have two plus one clubbed guns and they're not being a two plus one 
division isn't stopping people from borrowing a club gun and, and competing with it, again, there's just less incentive to do so. There's less draw. Everyone likes the idea of winning a trophy or winning a medal and certainly being able to compare yourself against the friend, your, your own friends. I do it enough. Um, having you know the two plus one division a club could have a host of two plus one shotguns they can be lent and borrowed and used by other people and get new people into the sport get more people um competing uh remember there's only as i said at the beginning of, of the video i think it's like between 1200 and 1500 uk psa members right and you need to be to shoot a level three match you need to be a uk psa member with a, a safety course right so out of the 150,000 uh, certificate holders, there are a maximum, let's assume that every UK PSA member does practical shotgun, there is only a maximum of say 12 to 1500 section one um, shotgun certificate holders or, or firearm certificate holders that have section one shotguns for the purposes of practical shooting in the UK PSA. So versus the 550,000 shotgun certificate holders the UK PSA could ease like like you know, 5 10 20 times their membership by capitalizing on this um this you know the shotgun uh, the shotgun certificate holders it's a massive pool of people it's i think uh, something that could really boost the sport and I would put money on potentially, and I know all the people that argue that this would be used against us um, is uh, are going to go, see, see, I told you. Um, I could see 2 plus 1 division becoming one of the main divisions because I think you would just have that, m that much more people shooting it. But what's that going to lead to? That's going to lead to people getting hooked shooting a 2 plus 1 and going, right, this is worth me putting some more time and, and effort into. I'm going to join a Home Office approved club. I'm going to get a firearm certificate and I'm going to get a Section 1 shotgun. Protecting the sport, growing the sport, it all comes down to numbers. It's about getting people started, getting people into it, getting people hooked. And if somebody already has a shotgun certificate and, you know, you can, I'm talking about in terms of the, the general sport as a whole in the uk but also practical shooting because you all know that i'm a practical shooting nut um and, you know and i'm passionate about growing the, the the sport in its entirety but very passionate also about growing practical shooting because i think it's just absolutely awesome and I, I really do think it's one of the best draws to the sport for certainly the younger generation so you know i'm passionate about growing it and i think getting the shotgun certificate holders involved with it more creating a diff uh, a discipline that they can compete in fairly amongst each other um is going to really really boost this sport and 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 get more people doing it get more numbers into it more fac holders which just bolsters everything up um but yeah so th so that was basically the video on the two plus one anyone still here Uh, what are you guys? Uh, what are you guys talking about? A th I three D printed a tack sack. Good for you, Captain Crack. Can I have a fondle of your tack sack? Um, do you know, ta tack sack's one of the things that I have wanted for a while, like for a very long time. And I know they don't make them anymore. And I know that I could easily print one. Just never got round to it. Um, but I would absolutely love um, to have one, just as you know, because why not, right? Um, we, we have talked about 3D printing a penis muzzle brake for Magload, so I think that would go pretty um, pretty well with a tax and a tax sack and a 3D printed penis muzzle brake. It's like the perfect combo, right? Um, oh, loads of things about the ATF. I hope nobody has any dogs. Um, yeah, that's that, that, that's 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 being removed. Um, Section one pump supremacy by a nice wood furniture eight seventy wrong. The best, you know, and and I'm not talking from my own experience here. This is through repeated threat threatenings of beatings. The best practical shotgun is the supernova. That's because like the best shooters seem to use them. Um, some guy took seven million rounds of two two LR. Um, some guys. I think that's a lot of ammunition for one guy to sort of make off with on their on their own um it sounded like a sort of organized um 
sort of an, an, well, an organized heist basically there must have been another truck involved you know to transport it um arm send arm send rss1 what are you what are you talking about captain um you don't do practice oh you're gonna buy an arm i uh, of course i asked what gun you were going to buy um the arm send rss1 i hope you're gonna get a maglode magwell for that and if you ask really nicely we can do you a funky color um, but I don't do practical. It will just be for shits and giggles and upsetting people on the clays. Uh, let's just hope your FEO isn't watching this stream because shits and giggles is not good justification or good reason. Uh, Bruce, am I right in thinking that controlling vermin with permission to shoot on land is a good reason to own a section one shotgun? Yes. Um, trick shooting. Technically, uh, you know, trick shooting is a sport or ex exhibition shooting. You can get a section one for doing that um but also uh, a lot of, of vermin shooters will use section ones um just because it's their job they want to be as efficient um on it as, as possible and, and i mean technically for clay pigeon shooting you might be able to justify it uh, although a lot of clay pigeon gr grounds if you go there you tend it tends to be a 50 50 ratio some clay uh, clay grounds just won't let a section one shoot there some will stipulate that you can only load two into it so for clay shooting again it's a hard justification what would you rather have a 1911 or a glock um a glock 19 between those specific two definitely a glock 19 i'm, a, I'm much more of a polymer modern um sort of pistol shooter i've shot a lot more glock um and also the walther ppq both polymer both very similar um, you know the the safety bladed triggers. Uh, I just get on better with those guns. Twenty eleven though, uh, or a Glock nineteen. So you know the reason personally I'd go for a Glock nineteen is because I could go and compete with it quite easily. With the nineteen eleven, unless I want to shoot like the classic or like old man division, um, it's the twenty eleven. It's the twenty eleven. You know, um, double stack nine mil. It's like one of the comp you know, main competition pistols. Uh, but yeah, between those specific two, Glock 19. ATF are a bunch of bastards. One time they raided my great uncle's house for having geese on his lawn. Not kidding. Were they armed? Did they have p pistol braces? Those damn pistol bracing. Pistol brace wielding geese. Um, they had a lawyer ask the ATF about one of those devices as a stock. Okay. Um... There was somewhere I saw a funny news story the other day. Um, maybe it wasn't like the flashlight. Um, well, yeah, it that rings a bell that they they inquired about it. Oh no, that was it. They registered. I think it was in Australia. They they registered a Nerf gun as a firearm. Um, it actually like yeah, actually registered a Nerf gun as a firearm. That's how sort of crazy things are out in Australia at the moment. Sorry, sorry for any Australians watching. Um, <laughs> fleshlight brace was a separate letter yeah, yeah you see and see I, I just see so much stuff floating around online i just sort of lose lose where i'm at what disciplines do kfc do so if those of you that don't know or those of you that are looking to start shooting in the uk one of the best clubs that i can recommend is kentucky firearms club it's been my home office approved club for a number of years now they pretty much do everything. If you're a member of KFC, you will pretty much be able to get justification for any gun that you want. It's not just saying that you become a full member and they're just going to allow you to apply for everything you want. But they do every discipline. They do you know, all the practical disciplines, be that you know mini rifle, practical shotgun, long barrel pistol. Um, they do uh, gallery rifle, all the different gallery rifle disciplines, be that with LBRs or under levers or, or two twos or so on and so forth. And they do long range shooting as well. There's even been the occasional clay day for um, Kentucky Firearms Club. So really, you can justify uh, absolutely everything. The, some of the best days I've had with KFC, like the, the matches, of course, I always love the matches, but occasionally they will just rent out but zero and they will go this is ours for the day bring down whatever the hell you want well you're taking it down to a club to shoot that's good that's good reason whether or not you want um you know an lbr to just put you know some holes on a paper on but zero or you want to go and get a 338 the poor and shoot at 25 years 25 years 25 yards standing it's all activities of the club at the end of the day 
Um, so yeah, um, in terms of the ones that you listed off there, sorry, your um, comment went off to oblivion. Can you apply for a 308, 22 LR and FAC shotgun if you are a member of KFC? Absolutely. 100% you will have no issue. If you're a full member of Kentucky Firearms Club, you will be able to get those absolutely no problem. What are your thoughts on Draco's? Um, what, Malfoy's? He, he, was a, he was a little bit of a bastard, if I'm going to be... Um, if I'm going to be honest. I am now furiously Googling. Oh, it's like the snubby little... AK4. Oh, it's so cute. Yeah, I've seen that a few. Uh, uh, what you have to remember is that in the UK, we don't get to have fun stuff like this. Um, but yeah, um, like, what's my thoughts on them? I'd have one. They look pretty awesome. Um, God, there's some pictures of. Why am I putting it on there? Like, do you. Some, perhaps you guys don't know what it is. I'm, you know, potentially not the only idiot on this stream. <laughs> meow. Um, so let's, uh, I'll bring, I'll bring this guy, uh, bring this up for you guys. Um, so for those that you don't know what a Draco is, this is a Draco. It's like a diddy little AK. Uh, let's bring up some more. I did see Hickok 45 with one. Um, yeah, nice little f flames there. So yeah, I mean, I, I would have, if we could legally have one, I would definitely have one. I mean, that, I almost thought that was form rifle stocks then. Like, just for a tiny second, I thought that was a form rifle stocks, like, Chiapa grip. So, what's, like, is this the Russian approach? Like, my grip is also a knuckle duster. If I run out of ammunition, I will beat you to death with my grip. Like, or, or is that because it's just an absolute beast to hold on to and you need every sort of ounce of purchase on it that you can get to stop it from flipping up um which is very the only proper experience that i've had of that personally with uh, full auto was shooting the cobalt kinetics they had um a cobalt kinetic um it was 556 five, uh pistol um and they also had a i think it was like a 16 and a half inch sort of standard size um ar also in 556 five, and both were full auto, but the I'm sure you've seen the clip a million times. It's the uh, Cobalt Kinetics muzzle brake on the longer um, barreled one. You can shoot one-handed, and there's a, a sort of slow-mo video of me, like, just one-handed, not particularly braced, just, you know, arm against my chest, shooting this AR, full auto AR, one-handed, no problem whatsoever. What they didn't elect to, to tell me is that there wasn't the same brake on the pistol. Um, and... I'm lucky that the um, it's not a hard backstop um, at the uh, it sups the Southern Utah practical shooting something. I swear there's an alert there. Uh, but anyway, the range that we went to in St. George, Utah, uh, basically you can, within reason, shoot over the backstop. Um, I got very close to doing so. Uh, the the muzzle rise on that thing, you know, from going to the one that was you could shoot one handed to this um, to this pistol, it was insanity, and you you really had to like push down on the top of the uh, of the handguard to to stop it just going all over the place. But awesome fun! Like after the first mag, and you got to got to grips with it, brilliant. And then I ended up having a catastrophic jam and sort of spoiled the fun for everybody else so, so sorry for anyone on that trip um took the guys at cobalt kinetics like a good 45 minutes to to, to fix it I, I i really did one on that one um haven't had kentucky fried chicken in years why not it's awesome especially you always got to add on the two wings for 99p that's just a must sometimes four and if you're particularly hungry six sometimes i just go there for the wings like I, I, again, I, I was an American born in the wrong country because my favorite food, like my death row, um, uh, my death row meal, like let, let's just get straight onto that, you know, because I've, I've actually put thought into this. Um, <laughs> my death row meal would be a proper, and, and when I say milkshake, like some sadistic fucks in the UK seem to think that flavored milk is a milkshake. It's not. It's got to have ice cream in it, it's got to be thick, and it's got to give you a brain freeze. Um, but a proper American thick milkshake. Um, some cookies, probably Ben's cookies, which is a, a UK thing. They're very, very gooey in the middle. Lovely. 
um, and some chicken wings. Probably KFC. No um, uh, Buffalo Wild Wings. Um, that that would be it. So like a shitload of chicken wings and a milkshake and some cookies. I'd die happy. That is like literally my dream meal. Callum, if English shooting sponsor it with swag, I will run a two plus one match in August. Um, define swag. <laughs> um, I'm 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 happy to uh, uh, I'm happy to work something else. Uh, maybe sexual favors. I don't know. I can only fit so much in at one time, so you might have to bear with me. Uh, were you going to talk about three D printed guns? Yes, I was. God, you you guys are like on it tonight. Um, and I don't know why I should be asking for this, but hit the like button. I can see that we've got more people watching than the, than there are likes, and that's just wrong. I am sweating my testicles off here. You you guys talk, you know, saying about you could hear the fan. I've turned the fan off. I am sweating to do this. So the least you can do is just you know just move the cursor or or drag your thumb and hit that like button. Makes me happy. It helps grow the sport because it reaches new people and gets more people. Um, gets more people shooting so it's all it's free it won't bite you i might bite you if you ask nicely um captain sorry i lost where i was there yeah they're yeah, 3d printed guns but i did also say captain crack i mean i could model you a 3d penis mod um don't worry corners has that covered through extensive 3d scanning we have managed to recreate uh, i'm not going to finish that sentence um uh, final um what is it Lu Lu lugia guardian um i know you're a regular you, I, I see your username all the time i never say it because i, I can't pronounce it because i'm dyslexic as fuck uh just here to wish you a good day Callum. well i wish you all the very best uh, as well thank you for dropping down dropping down dropping by um why are you down there that's what she said were you going to talk about 3d printed guns yes we were so some people have said I have a fascination of um, a fascination with 3D printed guns. That's incorrect. I have a fascination with guns. I also have a fascination with 3D printing. And you could argue that they mix very well or very badly. They're just too big an interest of mine. My uh, sort of university final year project was all around 3D printing. Um, Magload, of course, is all around 3D printing and, and using additive manufacturing and, and sort of groundbreaking manner, um, sort of manufacturing techniques through additive manufacturing. Um, so, and of course, I love shooting. So, of course, when there's 3D printed gun stories, I, I tend to be pretty interested in them. And for as long as I can remember, I have been warning people of the dangers that we will at some point have a serious problem on our hands. Now, a lot of people say that actually this is a good thing because it will completely null and void gun laws. I don't necessarily know if, uh, if I would put that down as a good thing, um, but it's certainly going to prove a point that, you know, when every criminal has a 3D printer in their basement and they are 3D printing glocks, um, and I know the same thing every single day. Oh, you can't 3D print a barrel. Yes, you can. Um, oh, you, you know, you can't 3D print ammunition. Technically, no, but there are many ways around it, which I'm not going to go into detail on. So I, I, I think I was one of the first people, certainly outwardly in the UK, to start really talking about 3D printed guns and the dangers of them and this potential issue we're going to have um, at some point. Uh, well, it wasn't that long ago that we had the first conviction for a 3D printed gun in the UK. Um, that was just a general, I think he was just a general criminal. Um, I, I think he, I think it was drugs. Uh, they raided his house for the drugs. They found a 3D printer and a viable 3D printed gun. I can't remember which one it is, but I'm not going to say it because you're just going to go out and search it, and I don't really want, don't want to be party to that. Um, as we all know, there are plenty of different companies and sites where you can go and get these files and, and print them. Public service announcement in the UK: just having the CAD files, having the G code for a 3D printed gun is enough to get you put in prison. So don't be stupid uh, but we 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 all know of the companies and the, and the big names within this sort of 3d printing gun revolution as, as some people call it um, and it was one of the popular one and it was like a fully functioning like 22 lr revolver um, absolutely insane like technologically insane and and very very smart um, but also mildly terrifying well that was the first conviction ever we've now had the first 
um, terrorist terrorist use. The gun wasn't actually used, um, but certainly it's the first terrorist involved conviction for a 3D printed gun. Um, unfortunately, it's on the Independent, which um, I don't pay, I don't pay for any newspapers. Like paying for for newspapers in, in my mind, like so many other sites, you can get your news for free. Um, but here's the article: Police issue warning over terrorist use of 3D printed guns as UK neo-Nazi jailed. Um, so it's the first terror case involving a 3D printed or 3D printed gun part. So it doesn't sound like it was necessarily a viable gun. But even just having pressure bearing parts, and yes, you can 3D print pressure bearing parts. Um, Maglod make a 2-2 muzzle brake that bears that pressure for, well, we'll guarantee it for 10,000 rounds. Um, might be 5,000, might need to check that. But anyway, it's a lot. No, it's 10,000. 10, um, so police has issued warning, uh, warning over the potential use of a 3D printed uh, of use of 3D printed guns by terrorists after the first UK case involving the homemade weapons. Uh, Dean Morris, 34, had parts of a 3D printed firearm at his home near Bristol alongside bomb components. I mean, I do like how this article, it's like, the guy had some bits for a 3D printed gun. Oh yeah, and also had some like bomb, gun, bomb components. We're not really worried about that. Um, I would be considerably more worried about the bomb components. Um... But yeah, it's it's obviously a first. Um, so unfortunately, like yeah, again, paywall. So sorry about that. Um, but for just the, I can just about make that up. Uh, the neo Nazi was jailed for eighteen years on Monday after being, um, after being eight. After it doesn't make any sense. I guess convicted on eight terror offences. See, this is why I don't pay for the news. Um, and two counts of possessing explosive substances. Uh, so yeah, it, it, this is only going to become more commonplace. I know a lot of people strongly disagree with it. They don't think it's going to be um, an issue or they revel in it. There's, there is a huge sort of movement and community out in the States where it's legal to do so, I might add, in terms of 3D printing guns or certainly 3D printing more components of guns. And yeah, fair play to you. You have the Second Amendment. You're able to do so. Um, fill your boots and obviously what the, the whole American side of things it's it is about propping up the second amendment it's, it's showing to the government that you can ban assault weapons you can ban uh, pistol braces we're just going to 3d print them so what's the point um, as are the criminals but obviously this is in the UK where we have a lot tighter gun laws and to see that people are fairly easily I mean these aren't always the smartest people first of all they got caught uh, but they're not always the smartest people anyway and the fact that these sort of general criminals and terrorists um, and nazis are able to get hold of a 3d printer and start printing viable firearms and, and viable component pressure bearing components that's got that's got to be worrying it's not you know, yes, they're still smuggling in copious amounts of, you know, full auto scorpions and Uzis from, um, well, the last point in Europe is um, the Netherlands. Um, but, you know, they're coming from Eastern Europe, uh, Eastern Europe and, and coming their way over. So, yes, there's a plentiful supply of illegal firearms in the UK and those numbers are only going up. This is just going to add to it. Um, so, so yeah, that that was that was the bit that I said I was going to talk about three D printed guns. Let me know what you guys think about it. M Gabriel, does the Queen let you have Tannerite over there? Unfortunately, one does not allow. Um, no, we we're uh, is Tannerite illegal? It's it's far too much fun to be legal. Let's let's just leave it at that. Like, I've. Yeah, you can't buy it in the shop like you can in America. I, 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 I knew about Tannerite, and obviously I've seen plenty of videos, but the first time I walked into a gun shop and it was just there on the shelf, and I'm looking at it going, that that, that, that can't be. I'll buy a small tub and see what it does. Boom. I need a bigger tub. Um, we, we started an effective arms race of Tannerite on the last, well, the last American shooting trips that I went to. Uh, we, we started a small arms race for Tannerite, it was absolutely ridiculous. Uh, Ryan and I, um, we got a little bit, had a bit of fun, um, got a bit more, uh, and we were, 
I, I think I've told this story before, but it's it's hilarious. It's like the chalk and cheese between American and uh, UK rangers. So we went and found this bay by ourselves, put a shitload of Tannerite um, down range, you know, um, shoot it, of course. It was significantly louder than what we were expecting. It was a lot more than what we had used previously. It echoed across the whole range. And we were both like, sh like we're going to get kicked off. Like, this is the last shooting we are doing on this trip. They are going to be furious with us. Sh we're going to be in so much trouble. Like, David's going to be furious at us. And then we heard the quad bike coming up. And we're like, oh, fucking hell, here we go. Lo and behold, one of the sort of range marshals or range staff pulls up, switches the quad bike off and goes, was that Tanner right? It's like, yeah. He goes, cool. Have fun. Just drives off like right okay in the in the uk you'd lose your fac you'd be reported to the police you'd certainly be banned from the club just chalk and cheese um but yeah once like ryan and i went back to the um sort of range office there and people were like did you just like let off some tannerite i was like yeah i just bought it from um one of the one of the local gun shops lo and behold on the way back from that range uh the, that evening i had to take everyone there to show them where to buy it and the next day, it was like World War fucking three, just nonstop during like the break period where it's just everyone sort of having a bit of fun, just Tannerite explosions everywhere. Um, and somebody thought it would be a great idea to get the like the mega big tub, put it next to the bay, uh, put it in the bay next to the range office and set it off. The whole place shook. Um, that's why I like going on American shooting trips, and uh, you know, I'm on, on point actually. There, there we go. This is uh, oh, let's move that out of the way. Um, this is the first American shooting trip shirt that I, uh, that I ever had. Um, you do get a nice shirt if you go on the trips, if that's reason alone uh, to go. But yeah, it's you know that that's why I love these trips because there is structured training. You know, I managed to um, you know spend time training with Glenn Wong and the uh, the Williams sisters. Um, is it Jalice or Je oh, I can never. Je it's Justine and Je Jalice, I think. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, and they are shit hot. They, they win. It. They were winning everything as like juniors, right? But not just the junior competitions. They were winning the adult competitions as juniors, and now they're just like absolutely unstoppable. So you get some serious like top level coaching and instruction, um, but then you can go and have some fun. I may or may have not done a drive by from a minivan. Um, again, that's just like another chalk and cheese uh, from uh, from the American Rangers. Like, you go to them. I've never like ev everyone, every like gun owner or like shooting enthusiast has always gone. Like, how would like a drive by actually go down? I don't mean like a literal drive by shooting. I, I mean like in a controlled environment with professionals. Definitely, definitely professionals. Um, like, how would it go? So. There's a free bay. It's pretty huge. No one's on it. Go to the range staff. Do you mind if we do some sort of shooting from the car whilst it might be moving? And they were like, uh, why Why wouldn't we? Like, why, why would we care? And it's like, I like this place. So, yeah, we've done that. You know, uh, night shoots, kill houses, tannerites. Um yeah it's pretty pretty fun but you get the you get the best of both worlds you get the structure you get the competitions you know you do three gun competitions in you know with you know 150 strong um sort of competitor numbers like some of the largest competitions that i've i've ever been a part of uh and you get to have awesome amount of fun and, and no one's a bit of a you know no one's a spoil sport basically no everyone knows you're there to have fun and no one hinders it um th there are limits like there are there are limits I haven't found them yet out in the States when it comes to shooting on a range, but I, I imagine there are limits. Um, anyway, that's that's my that's my Tannerite story. Um, and, and no, I don't believe it is legal here in the UK. And even if it was legal in the UK, you wouldn't you wouldn't keep your FAC for long if you had some. Uh, where is KFC based and how much is membership? Uh, predominantly KFC Kentucky Firearms Club is based um, at Bisley. Um, however, they have a they use a range in Leon Solent right next to Portsmouth or it's Gosport, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, so they, they've got a range there where they do practical shotgun um, and they also have a new quarry range just outside of Basingstoke, which I believe is going to become their more sort of permanent 
permanent home. But they they shoot all over the place. They've they've done matches and shooting at Stockbridge uh, Clayground. They do it at Leon Solent, um, you know, Basingstoke uh, Quarry, uh, Seven Side Range over by the Seven Bridge, um, and also uh, Bisley. I, I think that's all the places I've I've shot with them. Um, and they uh, like they've done trips, um, done trips out to the Netherlands. Um, that was awesome fun. I did two of those, um, and trips out to Prague, and obviously American shooting trips. It's sort of the same people, but it is technically separate. Getting hungry for KFC with all this talk. It happens to me every week. Maybe one day I should just have a KFC just for the shits and giggles. Um, <laughs> maybe that's how I sponsor the English shooting. If we were to do an English shooting two plus one match, KFC for everyone. Although after the cease and desist, desist letters both myself and KFC got, I don't think we're going to get any discounts from them, that's for sure. Um, here's a tip. Kill the illegal drug trade, you kill the illegal arms trade. Drug and firearm trafficking go hand in hand. See, I actually use the drug and the firearm comparison and analogy in a slightly different way um which is i uh, don't quote me on these the, these statistics but I'm, I'm fairly good at remembering numbers so it's they're going to be in the, the ballpark but you're going to get the general feel for this right so in america there are um i think an estimated uh, 10 million regular drug users right everyone with half a brain admits that both in the uk and in the us that the so-called war on drugs has failed right out of a population of 250 million only 10 million regular drug users and they can't even stop they can't stop that right they've admitted it doesn't work they can't police it they can't control it it's a failure how many gun owners are there in the us how many guns? Like I think then there are there was that article where there are now more guns than people, or there are there are more guns that the government know about than people um, in the U.S. So you're talking you know over a quarter of a million firearms, and I, I think it's about fifty percent of the population are gun owners in the U.S. I might be completely wrong with that, but yeah. So you're talking at least at least a hundred million gun owners so you've admitted that the war on drugs which was roughly only 10 million reg regularly regular regular users was a failure how do you think the war on guns and illegal firearms when there are 100 million gun owners and over 250 million firearms is ever going to have a chance of being successful that's the comparison that i like to give um you know criminals are gonna crim you know, I, you know, and people go, oh, we should just, you know, remove any Ill illegalities of of murder. Then we should just not have any laws because criminal are gonna are gonna crim. No, you you need to be able to punish people, um, but the certain things are just, you know, murder is already illegal. So trying to stop people from murdering with a like, why does it matter if somebody gets murdered with a knife or a gun, right? Somebody's still getting murdered. Like that that's sort of the, the takeaway point from that, isn't it? Do you think the UK could do what California recently did with their assault we weapon ban lifting? Um I'm not like an expert by any means in, in politics, I don't pretend to be, but the US and the UK political system is very, very different. And we don't have the sort of secular, you know, separation of of counties here, right? you have a centralized government what they say goes N no one else can overrule that right well apart from the queen um but the you know the the it really has to be at a central government level it's we would have to pass a new bill it would have to go through the houses of commons the houses of lord and then also the queen although that's more of a uh, ceremonious thing the i don't think the queen um in her rain has ever sort of vetoed a law um to my knowledge uh but yeah it's got to be voted on in the house of commons so could we potentially change the law absolutely we can change we could potentially change any law at any point if we can get it in front of the houses of of or if we can get it into the commons in front of the mps and they vote in the favor the issue is that of course 
every time we open we we open up any discussion about lawful guns and opening things up and you know bringing back handguns or bringing back semi-automatic rifles all people go on about are two events that happened 30 years ago um you know we have moved on considerably as a society and also the checks and balances and processes in getting a firearm certificate are a hell of a lot str more stringent today than they ever were back then but still the hungerford dunblane are instantly quoted and most mps are never going to be seen to be opposing um the laws that were brought in after those two um those those two events unfortunately it's very much an uphill thing this is why i always say it's a numbers game mps care about votes mps care about voters um to a certain extent they care about keeping their job and 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 staying in in power in a in a way right with only i think in a, a total you know say 600 to 700,000 certificate holders in the uk we make up like less than one percent of the population that's not a big enough percentage of the population to worry about pissing off if it was five ten twenty percent of the population and we were avid you know a, a disproportionate sort of avid voter because i think only like what is it like 40 or 60 percent of the population actually get off their ass and vote so you know when you're talking about 10 or, or 20 percent of the population that is enough to be able to swing a vote look at the american elections the narrow margins uh with those um even previous i mean recent and, and you know recent previous elections in the uk it's um you know we had the conservative um lib dem coalition you know an extra five percent of votes for the conservatives they would have had a um you know they would have been fully in control they wouldn't have needed to um have a coalition with the lib dem so yeah we can get that number up then we have more political power as it were we have a bigger political voice because the mps are going to be a lot more worried about pissing us off uh, really that is the only way get enough people shooting enough people having certificates so that politically we have a bigger voice uh the penultimate ninja um what's the last ninja then um my uh local sporting goods store not even a specialist gun shop sells tannerite it's just on the shelf shelf in one of those aisles not locked up or, or anything yep it was just an end of aisle case when i um i bought mine jesus christ i'm sweaty um you you, you needed to know that just i'm sure you feel a lot better for it um yeah it was just on the end of an aisle you know just stacked up there and it was we did look like thick as thieves i got i would love to see the cctv it was like this is tannerite yeah it's not locked up yeah okay i'm just gonna take a jug of that no nope, i haven't been wrestled to the floor this is going well so far make our way to the till on the till and then it's like hello there sir it's like oh shit here we go um do you have any id it's like oh they're not going to accept a british driving license are they i get get my british uh uk driving license out give it to them oh you're from england yeah planning on having some fun yeah cool yeah you're over the age of i think it's tw it's 21 or 18 um yeah have a good day well that was easy like it was like buying ammunition in walmart for the first time i seriously thought i was going to be like piled to the floor as i walked out um again this is this is the stark difference between the gun culture in the uk and the the gun culture in the us um very very stark english shooting how do they classify pistols in the uk if it's anything with a barrel under 12 inches then possibly one of the pistol crime is a one of the sorry how do they classify pistols in the uk if it's anything with a barrel under 12 inches then possibly most of the pistol crime is sawn off shotguns oh okay so what okay um no 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 so a shotgun is defined as a gun that has a small uh, smoothbore barrel right so s straight away if it's got a smoothbore barrel um it's a shotgun um, by by UK de definition, so you're not going to get any mix up there. Um, we we don't technically have the definition of handguns. We have the definition 
of short arms and long arms. A short arm is anything with a barrel under 12 inches or a, uh, a total length of under 24 inches. It is short arms that were banned um, in 1997 after Dunblane. Um, I always get the two confused and the, and the dates mixed up because I don't... Whilst I end up talking about it quite a bit, unfortunately you do as a you know a shooter in the UK, um, I, I don't pay particular attention and I want to fill my my, health, my head with more happy thoughts. Um, but yeah, that, that's how we classify it. And then in terms of the long guns, then you have rifles, well that's anything with a rifled barrel, and shotgun, which is anything with a smoothbore barrel. That's the general long and the short sort of layman's explanation of it. Um, but no, um, and in, in terms of that, it's the, it's the t statistic that I love to quote, which is still today, even though they were they weren't banned in in the fullest extent, but certainly further restricted and reclassified. But since the the banning of handguns um, within the UK, excluding Northern Ireland, um, s still today, forty percent of all firearm offences are due to handguns or short arms, right? And and we heavily restricted those, right? So just goes to show that criminals don't care mean meanwhile you you destroyed god knows how many businesses um destroyed so many people's hobbies for for what avail right gun crime increased is still increasing 40 percent of all firearm offenses are still committed with handguns didn't really solve anything with that Got to say, from the outside perspective, the Conservatives in the UK just look like Labour Party light. Um, yes, like in in America, it's as f I know there's going to be people that strongly disagree with it, but the way I look at it, it's like the um, the Democrats are like slightly left of our Conservatives, the Republicans. Are like slightly right of UKIP. Like the the like both parties in the US compared to the UK are right wing. Um, in comparison, um, what well, maybe more recently the Democrats have, have gone more left, but they're still very right in comparison, especially the Republicans. Um, in the UK, L Labour is is bordering on communism at this point, um, and our Conservatives are. Uh, you could, you know, center right, maybe even encroaching on being, you know, left of center. You know, certainly in comparison to the US. Um, sorry, I saw uh, somebody said dumb question. I like a good dumb question. No, there's no such thing as a dumb question. Only dumb answers. <coughs> sorry, I just got a little bit of that spicy cough. Uh, just wash that down. Um, dumb question, but would the checks and balances that are in place have stopped that BLM murder in London from uh, member? Sorry, not murder. Member in London from getting shot? Um, no, because I believe it was a handgun, and handguns can't be legally owned. Um, I'm not saying, like, I am a supporter of our licensing system, right? I'm not saying it stops all crime. I'm just saying it certainly helps prevent people that I think we can all agree shouldn't have guns have guns. And I'm not talking about the serious organised criminals. They are seriously organised, right? Hence the name. They are going to find a way to get a gun. I am talking about the opportunists. I'm talking about for lack of a better word the scum right the 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 delinquents the, the people that are are sort of too thick to even wipe their own ass th that's the sort of people that you maybe want to vet um from having i'm not saying that if if you're not intelligent you can't have a gun or you know if, if you're not wealthy or anything like that i you, you know what i'm trying to say like the the people that are just general shit bags that i think we would all agree shouldn't have um, access to firearms because they're going to do shitbag sort of things um, that's what our licensing system is very good at preventing and also because it's so stringent very little uh, crime comes from 
legal firearms in the UK. And all this time that that is the case, it gives us a very good argument to say that we are not the issue, right? I know it doesn't particularly work, but all the time that we are not the issue, we are not, you know, we're, we're only responsible for like, you know, 1% if that of all firearm offences, the the spotlight can be in the in, in if done in the right way shifted off of us that's what i want to continue all the time like if we start making it easier um if we you know of course i want it in in a way for people to be to, to be easier to get into the sport that's why i did started this whole channel that's why i do what i do um but if we make it too easy for the let's say wrong people to get guns and they start doing wrong people things with those guns it looks negative on the whole of the gun um community right we we want to be whiter than white squeaky clean we do not have the second amendment to fall back on as a community we need to be absolutely impeccable and unfortunately that means that we we do need to have high standards and the checks and balances to prevent people that are going to fuck it all up for all of us um from getting those guns I know that's, in a way, you know, again, I there's a lot of things about America that I'm, I'm never going to grasp being from the UK and being in the UK, like sort of UK shooting scene. And I'm sure like all of that, there's uh, a lot of Americans are going to find that very hard, hard, hard to grasp. It is not a God giving right in the UK to own a firearm. That That's just the, the facts of it. It is a privilege to own firearms in the UK like it or otherwise that is how it is um i'm not saying that you know it can't be changed i'm not saying that i necessarily agree with it or disagree with it that is just the facts and we've got to work around that as it is turn on the fan i am rather melting aren't i um they used to sell tannerite at walmart they used to sell ars as well they, they used to be able to get pretty good selection of guns um in walmart Lurid, um, English shooting, should I get the GSG-16 or the MMP-1522 for my first go? 1522. Like, I mean, the GSG-16, it's a bit of a fun gun. Um, it, it's just not the best gun at all. The Like, that isn't, a, for me, and it, I, I would recommend going and shooting both of them, certainly going and getting both of them in your hands, and... If you really like the GSG-16 and, and you prefer it over the 1522, then get that gun. I would just strongly recommend going for the 1522. It is by far a better gun. You can go plinking with it. You can do some gallery with it. You could go bunny bashing with it. You could go and compete um, at the top level in mini rifle with it, right? So, you know, um, uh, Vergard, um, who's one of uh, Team Maglode, a member of Team Maglode, uh, he is the Norwegian mini rifle champion. He uses a 1522. Ben Ducker for a long time, also Team Maglode, used a 1522. He's he's actually gone to a um, a, a, a CMMG converge, uh, converted uh, uh, caliber innovation SIS car. Um, that's to mimic his 223 full bore rifle that he shoots out abroad, so that he it's, it's sort of cross cr cross training and cross compatibility compatibility between the platforms. But I, th I think even Ben, to a certain extent, admits that the 1522 is one of the better platforms. Um, Josh Hicks, for a very long time, was using a 1522. Um, I believe he is the current mini rifle champion. That might be Ben. That they're, they're both like the best mini rifle shooters in the UK. My general point is, like the best competitors, the, the top shooters, use the 1522. But the 1522 is a really good price point, and you can just have it as a fun gun. So that that would one hundred percent be my um, be my vote. You guys need a second amendment over there in the UK. Um, it certainly would make things easier <laughs> in a lot of ways. Um, English shooting, I fully agree. Fifteen twenty two is definitely the better gun. Just wondered whether I should start cheaper and work my way up or not, since beginning shooting is pretty expensive overall like how much are you say like you can pick up a 1522 for 600 pound like how much are you saving and then you've got to look at it potentially the other ways if you buy the cheaper gun and then six months later go actually i want a 1522 you've actually spent a lot more money um 
the the fifteen twenty two like you know in, unless the GSG like sixteen is like fifty quid a hundred quid, put the money into the fifteen twenty two like like honestly, and then buy a lot of magload stuff, please. Um, what's the largest fifteen twenty two mag out there? Um, as David Kittle said, it's the Black Dog uh, Machine fifty round drum mag. Um, I'm one of the lucky few that has one because they uh i believe they won't import them into the uk anymore so um they are becoming like rare as rocking horse shit um so i'm definitely cherishing mine at the moment um there's been uh, a lot of talk about maglode as some of you all know i am part of the uh the maglode team um both in terms of the shooting and competitive aspect but also as part of the uh, h uh, hq i work with with connors who was the founder of maglode um and and together it's you know it's our full-time sort of um full-time job basically in a way or, or full-time life um it's a little bit more than a job uh and there has been a product that many people have been asking from maglo because maglo is very shotgun centric we of course make the um nexus pro quad loading caddies so if you're into any practical shooting or three gun it's arguably the best quad loading system in the world um it's certainly the lightest it has the best retention it's lifetime warranty anyway i'm not here to sell you the nexus prime here here to potentially sell you something else so being quite shotgun centric the number one product that has been asked um of recent are charging handles so uh bolt handles and i am very happy to say uh that we have the first production batch um let's see if i can get that to focus focus there um so this will be for the um pretty much all of the Benelli's um, but obviously predominantly the M2's but it will work I believe with all semi-auto uh, Benelli's uh, and the M3000 the M3000 M3500 and also the M3K and this weekend um, this weekend gone uh, I ended up winning the unofficial 2 plus 1 division um, of KFC and I was running this uh, for the not this exact one because it's still on the gun um, but I was what running the maglode load charging handle on that it is super super light it's uh, hollowed on the inside so it is um, like hardened I can't remember the exact material that sort of Connor's bag um, but it is a hardened steel um, actually quite difficult to uh, machine in some ways but it's all hollowed out and is incredibly light I have all the specs or on the website but they will be for sale tomorrow they are going live tomorrow um and i like to give you guys the scoop i like to give you the you guys the heads up um in terms of new maglo products uh the price is going to be uh 34.99 um and as you saw you've got the that color there um those are actually removable he says i promise i'm not lying there we go so you can actually they're like little bands um you can see the grooves there so you can run it if you don't like the the colors come on camera there we go no come on hide behind it um so you've got those slots there it is going to come with a full pack of colored bands so like all the general colors right i think there's like eight or nine different colored bands you know blue black yellow green um pink purple orange white yeah that, 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 about about that much um so it's going to come with a full set so you can choose what color you want to put on it um super super lightweight and it is a superb um hard anodized finish it's like almost like a, a mirror um finish on it so yes a lot of people have been asking for it and the reason for those those are rubber o-rings on there um and that's for grip so obviously you know you're only gonna have that to get onto and it's so when you get your fingers on there it's just got something ribbed for your pleasure obviously um it's just something to grip on so you don't slide off that way and also this is a non-spinning one i know some people like to sort of spin off the charging handle this is fixed personally i hate the spinning ones because you slip off of them this you're going to get a grip grip on it it's not going to spin and you're going to be able to yank on that um, charging handle so yeah keep an eye out if you are interested in being one of the first um, outside maglode to get your hands on the new maglode charging handle and you have an m3000 m3k or m2 m1 m3 
and four. Um, that's the motorway. Um, or oh, there, there were there are others. Anyway, um, it will it will be going live on on the Maglode website tomorrow. I was trying to get it up there tonight for you guys. Um, if any of you wanted to sort of be the first, um, I just ran out of time. I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, tomorrow it will be posted tomorrow on the Maglode. Uh, Facebook page for for the announcement, but just keep checking the site if you are uh, interested. I know there's like a good like thirty people that have been hounding us for the last six months about those, um, and yes, there will be more to follow. So um, obviously, the thirteen oh one will be um, next on the list. Uh, apart, f well, the thirteen oh one and the M twos like that. You know, thirteen, you know, with the M two and the m3000 are pretty much cross compatible so you know we've already got the m2 the m3k and um and, and the m3000 so the next will be the 1301 that's uh, next to that is the most popular gun um uh, but yeah so mu much appreciated if any of you guys uh want to get one of those from magload one of the downsides of being a younger shooter is not having too much money to spend uh, but I definitely will make sure to have both in my collection as soon as possible. Good to hear. I know um, exactly how you feel. I started shooting uh, in my final year of university, so maxed out credit cards, all that sort of stuff. And it wasn't the final year, pen penultimate year um, I started shooting. Um, anyway, I was a student, well into my course, no money. Um, I just begged, borrowed and stilled and hoarded myself out to be able to do it. Uh, it's it was well worth it and I, and I don't regret a single penny I have spent on on any of the guns uh, even the ones that I ended up selling off like I've loved every single gun that I've, I've owned and re and in some ways regretted selling um, s selling a lot of them the 1522 is 600 pound in the US they're about 450 dollars yes no need to rub it in thank you very much um, it's called the UK shooting tax uh, pretty much as a rule of thumbs, I mean, you're saying $450. I have seen them sub $300 in shops. Uh, usually, pretty much, you convert the dollar price of a gun into from dollars to pounds. So if it's $200, convert it to £200 and then double it. That is roughly what guns cost here in, in the UK. Um, in terms of ammunition, I think, well, at the moment, we're probably actually slightly cheaper, um, weirdly. What is the best car for a game shoot? Well, there's only one, right? It's got to be a Defender or a Range Rover, right? Um, I, 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 I've been to a few game shoots. It, like, I think definitively from what I've seen, it's the Range Rover. That's what um, the majority of people seem to have. Um, or, you know, some people like to turn up in like McLarens and, and Porsches and then just you know bum lifts from everybody else but you have the gun bus right so you can turn up to a um a game shoot in a ridiculous car uh, and then you know just hop on the game bus english shooting what's your opinion on the l85 uk military rifles i've heard that the new a3 model has fixed um, all the prior problems um to be honest i i don't you know, apart from like obviously the enfield and like the mosins i've got a little bit of soft spot for either of those um but in terms of like modern military rifles it's not i i am predominantly a sports shooter um you know i can talk for days about all of the different mini rifle ars available in the uk market or practical shotguns or long barrel pistols and things like that but when it comes to sort of military um, it's not a topic that I'm hugely hot on. Uh, I did you know, very uh, fortunately have the opportunity to, to shoot um, an SA-80 uh, with the British military in, in semi-auto. That was good fun, um, along with uh, Glocks. Um, it was a, a charity day that I was invited to. Um, so I do sort of cherish that experience. Um, and I know a lot of people complain about the, the SA-80s and, and all that, and they've had endless problems, but I... I don't know enough to comment about it, so uh, I'm not going to sit here and, and sort of uh, bullshit you guys about it. Martini N Henry or Snyder Enfield? Snyder, let's, let me. I'm just going to go for the Enfield. <laughs> don't know what it is, but it's an Enfield, right? Um, ooh. To be honest, I've never shot either of them. 
again, whilst I have a soft spot for, say, an Enfield or a Mosin, um, not huge into the, like, historics. Like, I, I, I like the historic. I like learning more about it and the history of firearms. But, again, I like the modern stuff. Like, the fact that the Benelli Nova Speed and M2 Speed is coming out turns me on far more than than learning about um historical firearms like i don't um i don't uh poo poo it like if i know there's people that love doing that and more power to you um i'm i'm just more of a modern chap <laughs> what's the best budget game shotgun silver pigeon breast of silver pigeon hands down mm, there's no debate like i'm i'm usually up to dis for discussions and debate two things i am not up for a discussion or debate on is which is the best mini rifle um or best all-round mini rifle uh in terms of value and and all that it's the 1522 hands down nothing comes close all round um and in terms of the best sort of starter over and under shotgun or best say you know starter or budget game gun bretta silver pigeon the bretta silver pigeon is just fantastic at everything it does right it's a brilliant clay gun it's a brilliant brilliant pigeon gun um and it is a fantastic um it's sorry but it, it's a fantastic clay gun and, it, and it's fantastic on a game day you don't feel out of place even with a beretta silver pigeon yes you might be next to somebody with twenty thousand pounds uh you know or ten or fifteen thousand pound double e double l right but it it feels it feels at home on a game day as much as it does on a clay clay day and it's just one of the best all-round guns and as i always make the joke i started practical shooting with it you know it's a very versatile all-round gun and it fits in everywhere it goes apart from a rifle range then you then you're you're pushing the boundaries uh sam davison thank you very much i much appreciate your um support um what's the score with fac air rifles do they require a slot if so section one or section two or is it the case that you can own one if you if you've got one um so um fac air rifle so any air rifle that is over 12 foot pound um in in power uh, or, or muzzle energy is a section one firearm right and you require a firearm certificate to be able to own it and anything that goes on a firearm certificate you need to have a slot for whether that's a component whether that's a moderator whether that's a rifle or it's an air rifle every single thing on a firearm certificate will have its own individual slot um and uh the, probably the, the next common question after that is well is there any is there then any limit to the muzzle energy that you can have on an fac rifle no there is no top limit within theory like you know if you start getting stuff that's like you know it's it's got the muzzle energy of you know a 40 mil then then yeah i think the uk government is probably going to tone things down a little bit um but yeah pretty much within you know with any commercial air gun that you can buy the sky is quite literally the the limit with one white um someone's saying something's greater than a silver pigeon greater than budget what pick one but you, you, you silver pigeon you put two um like the silver pigeon like yes what well, i mean brand new now like the sporter version they're like 17 1800 pound it's it's not a small amount of money um, you can still pick up silver pigeons for less than a thousand pound the great thing about putting a thousand pound into a used silver pigeon is you will never lose any money i um so i i've said this a million times but effectively i paid like around 12 to 1300 pound for my silver pigeon sporter they now sell new for like 17 1800 pound and probably for my age of silver pigeon in the condition that it's in i would still get like the 1300 quid for it right so i in you know in in sort of that thinking i haven't lost any money on it um and yes i know i don't have a shotgun certificate or a firearm certificate because i bought the silver pigeon when i did um it is still legally my property i just don't have the the certificate or authority to be able to sort of 
possess it unsupervised. Um, but it's still sort of legally my property, so that's why I refer to it as being mine. Uh, but yeah, so I, I would be able to get the money back for that, no problem whatsoever. Um, it's it's just one of those guns you sh you shouldn't worry about putting money into it. It's always going to be worth what you what is. You're always going to be able to get your money out of it. You know, you go and buy something like you know a brand new Remington 700, whilst a very popular and very good gun all round. Um, you you come to sell it a few years later, you're going to lose money on it. Um, old Winchester, eight, you want a good investment gun? This is a video. I can think of two, three, three right now. The Silver Pigeon gone up in value. Mose and the Gantz definitely gone up in value. Fucking pisses me off. I had to sell mine because they're now twice the price. And Remington 870 Wingmasters, like the old school, like 1980s ones, um, they've like double or tripled in value. So this this is definitely a video idea. I like this. I like it when they come. I'm writing that one down. Um, bear with me. Because I know what will happen. I'll get off the stream and I'll forget. That's if I haven't melted into a puddle by the end of it. I hope you're appreciating this. Um, <laughs> investment guns now i know they're like you know they've only made effective hundreds of pounds and probably when you're talking investments over that period of time you want to be talking thousands but still making money on guns that's a win-win you know um wing, bear with me and cool that's done Thank you for that. Um, actually, I need that because that's got my notes of other topics that we wanted to talk about this evening. Um, oh yes, sad news. Some sad, some sad news in the gun uh, industry. The last knob creek. Um, I actually posted that. That's the charging handle. I'll get that out of the way because I'm showing you guys. Don't need it now. Um, so some of you may be aware of the knob creek machine gun shoot. Um, if you haven't, why didn't I get this video up earlier? Prepared as always. Um, if you haven't seen, like, prepare yourself. If you've never seen the Knob Creek um, night shoot, I think I've shown it on live streams before, but it's it's always worth another look. Uh, let's bring this up for you. Like, if you could sum summarize like American gun ownership in one video, this would be it. Oh, it's not even like the most spectacular. Let's can I? It's it tracers, mini guns, just all full auto, um, Tannerite down range, explosions. Uh, it's just absolute insanity. Um, just look at that. Um, very. If it wasn't for COVID, um, when we were originally meant to be going out to the states for the uh, most recent um, Kentucky firearms, not Kentucky firearms, American shooting trips trip out there. Um, we were going to be out in Kentucky, and Knob Creek's in Kentucky, we were going to be out in Kentucky, um, this isn't even the best video, where's the drone one? This this is the insanity. Um, we were going to be out there in Kentucky, like, a couple of hours away um, during the night shoot, and I was like, this is a bucket list thing for any um, any shooter, and, and I don't really need to explain why when you can see all of that. Um, absolute insanity so we were going to be out there and of course we were going to go um just absolutely had to like why wouldn't you well obviously things have got delayed we're now going the end of this year um and unfortunately um the 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 knob creek um shoot um oh the, the aerial view this you gotta watch this <laughs> it's insanity it's just the like yes absolute dream bucket list thing right um anyway that's enough of that because i'm i'll get done for like copyright or whatever um wouldn't be the first time uh anyway there's oh uh, no i need to bring back the screen because there's this letter um so unfortunately the october shoot this year is like a week before we go out to um to kentucky um and they have announced that this october's trip or this october's machine gun shoot at knob creek will be the last one um which is like mildly devastating uh because it, it just everything aligned for it last year it just looked like it was going to be the like just the perfect experience all round and like tick off these bucket list things um 
and yeah then then it's it's not so case of raw in some ways um i have seriously considered like extending the trip um you know like a week longer but i think we're already going out there for like over three weeks and we just cannot it just like in terms of running mag load it's going to be hard enough going away for three weeks um but yeah the doing extending it for a fourth would just be insanity for us um so it's just one of those things never got to experience it if any of you lucky sods have experienced it then good for you um but no i i know of a, a, a few people that are going to go out there for the um for the last uh shoot um and i wish you all, all the very best for that um besides it's not like we don't make anything at all ai in portsmouth are a big player yes there's a new ai gun again i'm not super into my long range stuff um i've always lusted after an ai uh but yeah they've just released uh like their their short action um 6.5 creed more again you all you all know what pops into my head when anyone says 6.5 creed more so i won't remind you of that um but yeah the uh yeah not not too far away um from me where where ai are um another um bit of interesting news so, so anyone that has been watching this channel for a while you may be familiar with the name full metal jacket rangers um they are the like you know earlier when i was saying there's like there's people that shouldn't be able to buy guns in the uk they are the epitome of those people right unfortunately and like i've said that before and loads of people go you're just saying that because there's a load of black guys there it has absolutely nothing to do with it they are fucking dangerous right you've seen any like i'll bring up bring up an old video right they are just dangerous and if anybody watches this and says oh yeah no no that they should be able to you know freely own guns i i seriously question you um let's uh let's try and find it how do i search so there we go full metal metal here we go so this was when was this video released this was back in great good one youtube let's open it just open up the video um this is gonna be a lot of me babbling on but you're used to it i'm sure uh, this was back in March, uh, March last year. Fucking hell, that's flying by. Um, let me get some of the footage, right? So there's this thing called uh, mini rifle exemption in the UK. Um, let me just get, a, I'll show you. Like, it's just dangerous, right? You know, sort of full 360s, not really wearing the appropriate eyewear, um, this is not a good image for our sport, right? Um, let me, is there any more? It's just me blabbering on again. Um, like, if if we're trying to get, like, handguns back and we're trying to open up the sport in terms of, you know, politically, like, this stuff gets out there, no. They're, they're just not, um, it's just not a good advert. It's just not a good look. It's not safe. It's not controlled it's just not a good look like i'm sure they're having fun right and and yes no one's died at those ranges um but those backstops like so the reason this range ended up getting like shut down is because there were rain there were rounds going over the heads of people at a nearby um cafe right and again the 360 you know they don't know what they're doing it's unsafe and it is well it was only going to be a matter of time before somebody got killed there um like like fair play they're introducing people into the into shooting right so i can sort of give them that but again i'm not a good advert for the sport well as far as i was aware the guy running the range um was convicted for threatening somebody with a firearm um or or made threats whilst in possession of a firearm so within the uk law there's this thing called mini rifle exemption and it dates right back to i think it's the the, the board barrel war or bore war um and it was to effectively increase marksmanship against the working class population it was to allow um people to own 2-2 rifles in order to, to practice their marksmanship 
So there is an exemption in law which allows you to own a rifle, a miniature rifle, um, of a caliber not exceeding 0.23. Yes, that technically covers 223. Um, and it makes no differentiation between centre fire and rim fire. It is it's just any rifle up to 0.23 caliber. You don't actually need a license to be able to buy. As the law stands, you can go in. You can technically go into a shop and buy a 223 bolt bolt action rifle. Or, moreover, it is used for 22 um, 22 rim fire um, or, or rim fire rifles. But yes, you could go in and buy a 1522 without a license and as much ammunition as you want as long as you are running a miniature rifle and this is the ex the exemption that these guys used now the reason that like just everyone isn't running around with 1522s or 22 semi-automatic rifles is because you still need to find somebody that is going to sell you one and the majority of rfds are not just going to willy-nilly sell a uh, a gun under the mini rifle exemption you are going to have to sort of prove beyond all reasonable doubt to them that you are a legitimate business that you are running a safe miniature rifle range um, and that therefore the heat isn't going to come back on them and there's been various accusations and various sort of rumors that the well the gun shop that sold all the all of these guns to this miniature rifle range no longer exists is no longer an rfd and i think that sort of tells you everything um and had various other issues so potentially and, and sort of rumoured to be um, fairly shady. So they got this firearm conviction and in the UK if you have a um, we can have any if you have a custodial sentence I think it's over three months um, it might be three years but I think it's three months you are prohibited from being able to possess a firearm and that's also shoot a, a firearm certainly if you are convicted of a firearm offense um you will not be able to possess and use firearms um so i thought that was like them done for life you know they would sort of demonstrated that they probably couldn't be trusted with guns they'd got this firearm conviction and you know they were sort of full metal jacket was was done and i am getting to the point um so a reliable source as they have asked me to refer to them uh, has um, sent a um, a screenshot of a message from the guy that was convicted, from the guy that was running all of this. I think I've actually got in the video, there's a picture of him. Um, yes, yes, there is. Um, again, tell me, is that a good look for our sport? And, and no, that's not a Marlboro, <laughs> like before you ask. Um, yeah, so, you know, smoking on a spliff whilst running a range. Perfect good advertisement for the, the sport. And I believe it's this person that actually got in contact uh, with my reliable source. Uh, or, or maybe should we say unreliable, reliable source. Just a reliable source. I've seen the message. Um, and they, they are looking for guns again. So he works, this source uh, works in a gun shop. They've seen that they have 22WMR semi-automatic ARs available to buy. 22WMR would also be covered under the mini rifle or miniature rifle exemption. Um, and they are canvassing for, for guns. They are trying to buy guns again under the miniature rifle exemption. So I'm going to be watching this one incredibly closely because Sean O'Neill from The Times picked up on this pretty fucking sharpish um, and saying you know it's not a good advert it's not a good advert this has already been picked up on and uh, the miniature rifle exemption has already come under fire from sean o'neill um, if i don't say so myself i think i did a fairly good job of shutting his bullshittery down but it, like can you can you imagine like it is going to be a difficult one to explain isn't it right sorry something that was quite obviously dangerous and obviously not in sort of the ethos of shooting here in the uk the people that were doing that got convicted from a you know convicted of a firearm offense and then ended up continuing to buy guns under the same exemption and running the range in the same manner like that's a pretty hard sell right so i'm going to be watching it very very closely and see what develops of it but for all intents and purposes it is it's rekindled let's just say um and it's only a matter of time with these guys look i i would go as far to say not not to work with them but like i i do see what they you know it's a it's a business they're being quite 
entrepreneurial entrepreneurial uh, about it which i can respect they're getting people that probably wouldn't otherwise shoot to to experience shooting which again i i can give a you know a bit of respect for just the way they're doing it so you know i i don't really want to associate associate myself with them in any way but if they are going to continue by some way in in doing this i i think obviously the police can't stop them because they're still doing it i i don't know so is it worth actually like trying to say to these guys look i i think you you guys are fucking mental you're not doing us any favors but here's a few tips right here's a few basic range safety um guides um just stick to this and you should be all right um again i you know the guys running a range smoking a joint like i, I don't think they're really going to worry too much about you know eyes and ears um but but yeah it is it is terribly wor worrisome and and it's stuff like this you know they are legally shooting they are own, owning they are effectively or were because i don't know how the whole conviction thing works they were effective legal gun owners right they are in the same bracket of fac holders just and, and sgc holders right they were legal gun owners we would all be painted with the same brush right you know all fac holders all sgc holders all um you know avid sensible shooters you know like myself like a lot of you guys they use this to basically represent all of us that's what the mainstream media do they go yeah but these, these guys they're, they're legal gun owners yeah but they're like not but but they are yeah and and this is what our gun laws allow us to do but oh shit you know, you, you can see how it can be used against us. Would you prefer legal centerfire semi-autos or short arms with the centerfire rimfire distinction in place? Um, so wait, so wait, are you saying, like, are you saying, like, I can either have centerfire semi-auto rifles like basically, if it's a choice between handguns and sem and um, centerfire semi-automatic rifles, I choose handguns. If it's a choose a choice between semi-automatic centerfire rifles and two two semi-automatic handguns, I would probably choose the full bore semi-automatic rifles. Um, maybe. Um, I I personally would like. Ha I'm not a huge handgun shooter, but this is one of the big reasons that I, I go abroad um, or, or I, I have been abroad as often as I have to shoot handgun. I absolutely love handgun. It, it is, for me, one of the most dynamic. I think it is is the most dynamic um, practical sport out there because the gun is so compact. You can move quicker. You can move more, ad, you know, more, you know, dynamically, more um you know with more agility um and it just looks quicker it just looks but and you know and when when i've seen videos of like good runs of myself it just it looks far less cumbersome than you know running around with a shotgun or running around with a rifle and i'm not saying it's it's less or more of a challenge i just prefer that that sort of speed shooting in a way that fast paced dynamic shooting that's why i like practical shooting and personally i think um I think handgun is is sort of the top step arguably action air is even quicker so why don't i do why don't i do action air um because the equipment frustrates the fuck out of me um uh, with with you know nine mils less less of a, an issue there in terms of reliability um but but yeah i, I would choose if, if we could have handguns back or semi-automatic full ball rifles i'd vote for handguns one uh 100 percent um, hi Callum, any news on the Southern Gun Company AR-15 under lever as I have my compensation money burning a hole in my pocket from the lever release and need to fill your slot? Well, hey. Um, no, I mean, uh, Neil had one for review. Um, I'm going to try and see if I can get hold of one at, at some point, but at this moment in time, I haven't even seen one in the flesh. Um, I'm hoping to change that, but we will have to see where that, um, uh, see, see where that goes um don't forget to hit the like button i've got to get that in i've got to keep remembering you guys it only takes a second and it does really does cheer me up and um and make me happy so if you haven't already just just hit it it won't hurt you 
and it, and it makes me feel really good. And uh, another, not necessarily favor to ask you, but if you do want to support the channel, um, there is, of course, the EnglishShooting.org website. I said that so... Sound, sound like I had a speech impediment then, which I sort of do, but um, EnglishShooting.org. Um, you can go on there, find a little bit more um, about English shooting. You can find all of the different social media that English shooting posts on. And when I say posts on, um, obviously, live stream every week on YouTube and a video every week on YouTube. Regularly post on Facebook. Um, Instagram, not so much. Twitter. I really enjoy on Twitter. I, I just spend far too much time arguing with people. But if you want to go and follow on the other social medias, you um, you can. Um, there is, of course, guides on how we've got videos. So if you're looking at getting into the sport, um, then this is... I, I will continue this series. So obviously the next step is getting your certificate and then buying your first gun. Um, I'm sort of waiting for my certificate to come through for, for, us, for me to do that. Um, maybe I should go on... Like Maybe I should do like refusals prepare myself uh but yeah if you want to learn more about the processes of getting um into the sport getting your firearm certificate yes all of these videos are on the channel but they are quite neatly on the englishshooting.org uh, website and of course if you want to support the channel and it would be greatly appreciated um there is a merch and um i'm going to show you something in a sec uh, we do of course have the new english shooting sticky um sticker by sticky bolt um so you can get them on there English the like OG patch the cap which I've been sweating into all night and you can also buy some magload swag on there if you want to learn more about the sort of mind game of um, practical shooting three circles great book um, you would definitely take stuff away from it you can get that on there and again some some more swag um, but on the English shooting merch side it's been quite a while um, in in the making um, Uh, oh, my, my reliable source, just a quick uh, update. Uh, my reliable source has just infer confirmed to me. Just to clarify, the person messaging them wasn't the guy that com got convicted. It is someone new. So I'm pretty um, I'm pretty damn sure that all he's got, all he's done is got one of his mates to like run the range. He's still going to be there in the background. He's going to be the one sort of running it, but it's going to be his mate that's a front um that that would be my my thoughts on that so um i don't know when they are likely to drop uh, or arrive but i've had the proof uh, we should have these very shortly um quite a diddy patch uh, i wanted something a bit smaller um little a uh, little bit more compact um so those are going to be coming uh to the merch shop very very soon but they're not in uh, just yet but anyway it's all, all goes back into the channel all um, helps buy equipment and stuff like that and pay for ammo because um, we get through you know, a reasonable amount of ammo when we're when we're doing reviews um, and yeah and I am probably going to oh Daniel always forget to um, always forget about the stream don't worry you can watch it on catch up um, dumb question what is the largest caliber for a semi-auto is it 22 LR I'm guessing that's outside the miniature rifle exemption. Uh, no. Um, so the largest caliber for a semi-auto legally under a section one in the UK is 2.2 rimfire, right? So it's just two, that, that's it, 2.2 rimfire. So it can be 2.2 WMR or 2.2 um, LR, or it could be even like 2.2 L, uh, 2.2 short, I would imagine. Um, but miniature rifle exemption is up to 0.23. It doesn't specify semi-automatic. It doesn't um, specify rim fire or center fire. It just specifies caliber at a maximum of 0.23. So 2.23 would technically come under the miniature rifle exemption. Again, you'd have to find somebody to sell you a 2.23 rifle under that exemption, but um, but theoretically you you could do it. Um, but anyway, I am. It's been a, a good solid two-hour stream. I really am sweating my testicles off at, at this point. Um, I'm gonna go have a nice cold shower and calm myself down. Um, but it's uh, it's been fun as always. Um, I am gonna wrap it up there. Sorry, I, there are other questions. Um, I need a drink. Well, I've I've got a drink here, but I just my brain's fried. Too it's too hot. What's the largest caliber in the world? 
I honestly don't know. Didn't Titler, Hitler, Hitler, um, Hitler make that sort of gun tank thing? I think that was potentially. Um, but yeah, I'm going to wrap it up there. Before you all go, if you haven't already, subscribe. We do this every single week, half seven um, p.m. UK time general chat and there's also a video out every single week on a variety of different topics from sort of reviews shooting news uk law um and just general video ranting um but yeah i really appreciate appreciate you guys hanging out um keeping the conversation going i really hope that you've all enjoyed it and have a good time that's sort of the uh um the whole point of it and you maybe maybe not maybe you've learned something um that would be uh that'd be good but yeah i uh really appreciate it i'm gonna hang it up there um just as i say that it looks like the streams are dying on me so probably quite apt to wrap it up there but yeah uh there will be a, a video out before the next night live stream but if you don't watch the video i will hopefully see you next thursday at half uh seven have a fantastic week get lots of shooting in it's meant to be shit weather but indoor ranges right they're open enjoy yourself keep safe shoot straight uh thanks for watching and as always guys i hope to see you soon